Hello and welcome to a new Carvite Vanguard Overdress video. So this is going to be another one talking about Season 2 of Overdress. We got a little bit of news but we're mainly going to be focusing on one kind of big topic. Because I thought there was a lot to discuss since Episode 1 is airing soon. And yes, Episode 1 is airing soon. It releases on the 5th of October. Which is only a little bit of time uh, for now. Obviously 5th depending on the time zone, you know, some time zones 5th, sometimes zones 4th. But for me, it's like around 40 hours from now. Obviously, the premiere for the episode is already like scheduled, which has a countdown built into it. So if you want to know exactly when in your time zone, you can just check the official Vanguard channel and it'll have a countdown there, basically. Um, but yeah, since it's not that long until the first episode airs, there's a little bit more info I want to talk about. Um... So let's go ahead and do so. Before I say anything, I did see a list floating around. Uh, this list seems to be like spoiling, like saying what like card fights, what matchups will be happening in each episode. And I'm aware of that list and I have it saved somewhere, but I've only looked at the first two things on the list. And so the first two episodes. And I'm not going to look any further because I don't want to spoil myself, basically. So, but it exists, um, and I refuse to show it. So, yep. Um, just in case it's real, because the, the two episodes I did see looked like they lined up with what we already know pretty well. Okay, <laughs> with that out of the way, because I, I was wondering if I didn't address that, people would probably ask me about it. So, again, I don't know how legit it is. I don't know if it was released officially or not. I didn't really look into it. I, I'm, I'm leaning towards it might be real, but I'm not going to believe anything and I don't want to look at it. So, hey, bit a bit contradictory for a news video for me to refuse to cover a piece of news, but whatever. Um, so, let's kind of get into the news. So, the first of all is the description to the first episode of Season 2. Because that does have a little bit of info in it. So, the first episode of Season 2 is labeled as Overdress Episode 13, Blessed Rain. Uh, and then, interestingly, it's labeled as, like, the Season 2 prologue, basically. So, this season has 13 episodes instead of 12. And so, it looks like it is still going to be, like, a 12-episode season, quote-unquote, but with a prologue at the beginning. So, 13 episodes, but one of them counts as a prologue. Which is interesting. I don't know what that really means, but it is interesting, like. Interesting. So let's read the description for the episode. Danji abruptly re relinquishes his uh, position as leader and leaves Team Blackout. We already kind of knew that, you know, like we were hinting towards that very heavily at the end of the previous uh, previous episode. So, yep, we kind of expected that. Megami chases after him and challenges him to a Vanguard fight in order to express the feelings she cannot put into words. So the leaked, I will talk about the first two things on the leaked list because those are the two things I looked at and I don't really consider like which car parts will happen in the first two episodes as spoilers necessarily. Um but basically this lines up with what the list said. The list which released I think before this went up, I don't know for certain, but th the list said episode one would be Megami versus Danji and episode two would be Toya versus Yu Yu. See the thing is the trailer uh showed like, the trailer we got a few days ago showed footage of Yu Yu versus Toya, and I thought that was going to be episode one. But it looks like episode one is actually a different clip from the trailer here with Megami and Danji. This is probably episode one, and this is probably the card fight that the description is referencing over here, is my theory. Um, makes sense, right? Uh, and if if that's all correct, then that means that the episode list is probably true. We don't know. Um, I still don't know what the deal with like them being nicely dressed and everything is. But I guess we'll get more context as time progresses. So my theory is, uh, and I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but my theory is at the end of this first like prologue episode with the card fight between Megami and Danji. They're on their way to some kind of event or whatever because they're all nicely dressed. And Danji is probably going to run into Marie Monet. And we'll get into Marie Monet in, a, in like a second. And that's going to be what the rest of this video is about. So let's go ahead and do so. So this is a translated character profile. 
um, for Moraemon A. I think it was Kyrus Darkblade who translated this. Um, I don't know why they didn't release an official translation for this, but whatever. Um, okay, so yeah, Moraemon A. So we already know that she's basically going to be the main villain of Season 2. Uh, she's already got a start deck assigned to her, and she's been hyped up since the announcement of this series. You know, back when they announced the voice actors for the main characters, you know, like uh, the main members of Blackout, you know, Yu Yu Danji and the others. We also got the voice actress Yuki Nakashima, and that's for Murray with no images. So that's how far back we've been teasing Murray. So it seems to me like she is just going to be straight up the main villain of Overdress. Uh, so let's read a, you know, character description. So 16 years old and leader of of Team Daybreak. With amazing prowess in Vanguard despite being blind from birth. She currently does live streams on the internet and has gained popularity with her open hearted and cheerful personality. However, she does not entertain those who comment on her eyes or on the rigid traditions of the Monet family. Even until today, she treasures her picture book that she used to ask her late brother to read to her. Okay, so there's a lot here and that's basically what the rest of this video is going to be about. It's dissecting this because there is so much info here. This raises so many questions. So, okay, first of all, let's get the kind of more menial stuff out of the way. Um, she currently does live streams on the internet and gain popularity with her open heart and cheerful personality. I do get the feeling she's probably going to be pretty two-faced. You know, like, on the surface, she's very cheerful and happy. But because she's theorized to be the villain of the series, behind the scene, like, you know when shit goes down, she gets very, like, serious and nasty. Kind of reminds me of Ren from the original series, Nest All The Way, where he was kind of very, like, cheerful, but then the moment a car fight started, he got very ruthless. Um, so that's very interesting. The fact that she does, like, live streams and has gained popularity, I think she's, like, the idol of this series. So there's been, like, this kind of pattern. I was wondering if Overdress was going to continue, where... The original series had three idols, right, with um, uh, Ultra Rare, with, you know, Rekka, Corrin, and Suiko. And then G had, like, a, a group of two idols with Rummy Labyrinth and Am and Luna. And so I was wondering, I was like, going by that pattern, Overdress should have one idol. I think Marae is that one idol, because she does, like, live streams and has a popularity. So I think she's an idol. <laughs> um... And I think she is, like, I, that's really neat. I like that a lot. I like that they're actually, like, consciously or not continuing that pattern with how much thought and effort has been put into, like, the details and stuff of Overdress. That's, I, I feel like that's got to be intentional. So that's, like, the smallest little bit. The rest of this is pretty big stuff. So, okay, what about, uh, she treasures her picture book that she used to ask her late brother to read to her. This spirals into a lot of theories because the theory up until now like looking at hair and the design and everything i was always thinking that she was danji's sister right because if we look at the hair for both of them like let's uh, zoom in here like so and then let's zoom in here like so you can see they have very similar hair, you know, like it's wavy in the same way, like she's got a little bit of a curl there, similar to Donji's. Similar color, just a little bit more pale. They look related to me, you know? And they both have like the two like half heart, like broken in half, like keychains that seem to match. Uh, so I always thought they were brother and sister. However, of course, this character description says, um, late brother, and of course, we all know that late implies the person is dead. Danji isn't dead. So here's my theory, right? And don't worry, like, this is a long shot. I don't necessarily expect this to be true or correct, but I feel like it lines up. Even if it's not correct, I feel like it still makes sense anyway, right? Because I put a lot of thought into who Marae is. I'm still not willing to let go of the idea that Marae is Danji's brother, even though she has a separate surname and even though she has a late brother. I think that she has two brothers, right? Uh, and the late brother could also be Danji's brother too. Sure, why not? I think that the death of this late brother, when the three of them were fairly young, 
caused you know like it's pretty common like when a family member dies like a brother like a, a son or whatever the two parents like that puts a lot of stress in their relationship and it causes them to break you know and divorce so i think the stress of the brother who we don't know about i think the stress of him dying caused the parents to divorce one of them was called momoyama and the other one was called Minei. One of them took Murray, the other one took Danji. That's why they have two different surnames. That's also why they both have the pendant, because it kind of rep like the broken heart represents a divorce. That's still related, which is why they still have the same hair, and that's why there's the late brother thing. That's my theory. Um, I think it makes sense, right? Like, I don't think that's too like obviously, you know, I'm I'm making up a lot there to like because we don't know any proof of that, but I I think it lines up pretty well, and it would explain why there might be a bit of tension between these two characters. Um, so yeah, um, that's my theory anyway, because the 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 word late late there is definitely throwing a wrench into things. Um. So, what about the blind thing? Because the blind thing also, yeah, she's been blind from birth. And the very first thing I thought of was, well, first of all, that does make sense. That's why she always closes her eyes. Cool. They address that. How often do anime have the thing where the character's constantly closing their eyes and they actually address it? Like Brock from Pokemon, for example. Um, that's really cool. But also the very first thing I thought of was, well, how would she play Vanguard then? <laughs> you know, like, Vanguard's a very reading-heavy uh, game and these cards are not braille and someone mentioned well you know sps have like a sort of grainy foiling to them so you can kind of feel them but the thing is i mean i don't think she has a fully sp'd out deck maybe she does but more so you know all the characters in overdress use card sleeves and card sleeves would get rid of any of the texturing on the card in the first place then someone on twitter pointed out and this is actually kind of genius uh i think it was freedom duo pointed out this card that was heavily rumored to be Murray's card, I think it was even confirmed to be Murray's card, the um, Danji like gives to Yu Yu, on the card sleeve over there is a sticker of a bunny rabbit. And originally when we saw that we were like, oh that's cute, someone put stickers on their cards, on the card sleeves specifically, not damaging the cards, just the sleeves. I think that she puts different shaped stickers on each card sleeve and so when she rubs her thumb against the sticker in the corner she goes oh this one's in the shape of a rabbit that means it's trick star and so on and so forth so what she does is she has a character like read out and like tell her what all the cards in the deck is and then she mentally like assigns each of those cards to a different sticker and then when she's actually playing she just feels the sticker and goes oh this is trick star and of course if you play with the same deck very often you'll eventually memorize the effects of the cards and stuff anyway kind of like how when i'm playing and i draw a card i don't actually have to read its effect text just looking at the artwork makes me remember what the effect was anyway because I'm so used to using the card in the same way her just like rubbing um the sticker on the card sleeve of her finger is enough to get her to do so I think that's correct that that lines up really well because I mean how else would she do it the only other um, the only other like theory I came up with and it's not correct because why would this happen is the thing that my valentine did in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters where she like sprayed the different cards with perfume and just smelled them but that doesn't make any sense and like I said I don't think Bushiro is releasing braille cards that would be cool but I don't think they are and even if they did if you're using sleeves the braille isn't going to work anyway so yeah that's a really cool detail though because they're definitely going to explain it. They can't have such a major character be blind and then not explain how they play Vanguard. And hell, if this is, like, the really exciting thing about this is what if blind people do end up watching Overdress, you know? Um, and then they hear about this in an episode and they go, oh, I can play Vanguard now too because I can do the same thing. And that's really cute to me. Like... I've never seen a card game tackle this before. Let me know if there has ever been a card game, like a trading card game that's tackled like blindness before. But like the idea that Bushiro, this anime, is giving blind people um, like options and like telling them how to play the game, that's really cool. I like that a lot. I kind of hope that Bushiro would end up like releasing like these sticker sheets, maybe as like a box topper or something in a booster box or something. 
to like get you to do that because I kind of want to do it myself like just for the aesthetic because I think the, the, the sticker on the card stick looks really neat. Um, I don't know if that'd be tournament legal. I hope it's tournament legal because it would be a bit hypocritical of them to like show people like this way of playing the game if you're dis like if you have disabilities and then not make it tournament legal. So I don't know how they'd handle that, but it's really cool nonetheless. I'm a big fan of that, and that's basically all the news I really have for now. So first episode, we already saw the description of it. It's gonna be. Megami and Dodgy Card fighting each other. They're most likely going to run into like Murray right at the end of the episode where it goes like to be continued. And then we'll probably like for the second episode cut to Toya and Yu Yu Card fighting, just having fun and all that other stuff, you know. Reintroducing Toyu again, showing how much he's changed in this time. And then after that, like the plot will really kind of start going and everything. So those are my thoughts. Uh, Murray does definitely seem like a really fascinating character so far. I'm looking forward to seeing um, what they do with her as a character. And I'm very excited to see uh, where they go with her. I, I think she's already really fascinating. The idea to have a blind character in a series like this is really, really cool. And I hope they handle that stuff really well. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, of course, there is the theory is like, well, you know, Vanguard Overdress has been heavily focusing on the eyes and its visuals. And so maybe that's why, you know, maybe it's teasing towards the fact that Marae's blind. Or maybe the reason Marae's blind is because she has slight psychoalia. That would be the stupidest plot twist ever. But <laughs> I mean, it said she's blind from birth. And I don't think characters in Vanguard are born with psychoalia. They gain it by card fighting a lot. So that wouldn't make sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Very scrambled on all, on all over the place. But let me know how excited you are for Vanguard Overdress Season 2. And let me know uh, how close you thought my theories are. Or if you have any other theories yourself. Maybe if you can come up with other ways that blind people would be able to play. Um, I was going to say, how would a deaf person play them? But I actually, being deaf probably wouldn't change your experience of playing Vanguard all that much really because it's a very visual game like being reading and stuff anyway so I guess that stuff's handled um but yeah no um that's all I really had to say for now be sure to like comment subscribe all that other great stuff I'll be covering Vanguard Overdress very soon even more as we get more episodes of it and everything I'm personally really excited uh, I like that we got this hiatus it gave me some time to kind of mellow out and you know, so that when it does come back, I'm like, excited again, rather than getting to a point where we have so many episodes that I take it for granted, you know, that kind of stuff. But I'm really excited now to see it come back. And yeah, so I'll see you later in some more videos. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe so you can see more in future. And remember, for every statement, there's always an asterisk. So see ya.